Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen Alpha 3.4.1 live state of the game, looking at how the game currently plays, what's good, what's not, what needs to be looked at in the short term, that sort of stuff. Alpha 3.4.1 has received some hot fixes server side, so I thought now is probably the best time to see how it all plays and works together for the 3.4 branch. Missions are for the most part pretty accessible and span across the entire gameplay area now between Crusader and Hurston, as well as truck stops also have got quite a lot going on with them as well mission wise. We have a pretty large range of missions now in game, bounty hunting ones where a single target is required to be killed, typically of a, a reasonably high reward. You can get some cool missions with Constantine Hurston as well, if you're lawful, and get some um, of the bounty hunting missions done first, and then that will give you access to more and more and more of them. Delivery and maintenance missions have you picking up a box or item and then taking it to another location. There are now also missions that have non-cargo box sort of like loot to carry around that you can like store on yourself. So uh, missions for like Clover Star Neely or Wallace Klim literally have an item that you can store on yourself and you can put away or bring out by pressing number six. So no cargo space required on your ship for those particular missions. But uh, the rest of the delivery and maintenance missions, the ones with actual cargo boxes, yeah, you need a somewhere to put those cargo boxes. There's scramble races as well. They're pretty brutal at the moment. They have you flying around or more commonly driving around on the ground and the idea here is that you need to get beacons to win and you'll be competing against other players uh, but they basically often end in just everyone murdering each other because they allow you to freely shoot your weapons in fact it's encouraged if there were respawn points right next to where these scramble races were or, or you'd be able to spectate or something then i'd really enjoy them but with scramble races at the moment there are just some issues you have to get to a particular area within a certain amount of time and that can actually be pretty restrictive you quite often might not be able to get there in time if you're otherwise distracted uh, and then even if you do if enough people haven't turned up the race is cancelled anyway scramble races work well enough if you have a reasonable group ready to go uh, and, and sort of like just go straight there when one spawns Mercenary missions for both clearing out FPS NPCs from Korea or underground facilities on Hurston. Both are working. Uh, some of the other missions have you killing a single target in one of these facilities. There's mercenary missions of a few different types. Kind of go here, kill a load of ships, that sort of stuff is typically what they'll have. Uh, there are patrol missions that will have you doing a reasonably long patrol route typically around the yellow asteroid field around Grimhex, and then killing some baddies that might pop up. ECN missions have you responding to a uh, NPC ship that's under attack, and then you defend it and kill the enemies, and hopefully that ship doesn't get destroyed. Probe missions have you scanning down signals um, using the ping, ping, uh, and then destroying a set of three probes within a time limit. There are enemy ships that might turn up as well, but they're totally avoidable. There are black box and retrieval missions, investigation missions that have you turn up at a wreck or an area, sometimes kill a ship uh, that turns up and then search the wreckage for a person or item in that area. And there's a, f a few more besides some of the more basic sort of things catered for still. Um, you still have those personal missions like the Kovalex investigation mission. And you've got those mission givers as well now. So some mission givers are just available randomly to you. They appear in your mission list. Some of them will be appointments. So you'll uh, have an appointment to go see Reco Pataglia or Wallace Klim or something. You go there and then they'll start the mission chain with you and you'll get more and more missions from them. Some require you to have done some prerequisite missions or um, something like the ECN ones for Miles Eckhart, for example. Or you might have to be a criminal and done some criminal missions to get Ruto missions. There are some reasonably in-depth missions on the ground at Hurston as well from Clover Star Neely. The damn satellite mission will have you finding a piece of tech and can have multiple parts to that quest that are different every time you play it, where uh, you might just find the item straight away on the satellite, or you might have to go and clear an underground bunker full of NPCs to get the item back, or maybe it's just fallen out of the satellite elsewhere. There are quite a lot of reasons to grind missions as well now, because... Doing some missions will basically get you some rep up and will give you access to some better paying missions and that sort of stuff as well. Uh, so it is worth doing a load of missions. And then, and then you sort of like see what the game has to offer from the mission side of things. Enemies and NPCs spawn much more consistently than they previously did. 
Uh, that said, if someone in your party or someone other than the mission owner destroys a target, that can sometimes not count towards the mission's completion, meaning that you can fail missions if someone else kills one of your targets at the moment. Obviously a bug. Some other more annoying mission accessibility bugs include mission items and boxes not spawning for the pickup terminals or someone else placing an item where you want to place an item. So that would prevent you from completing a mission because you need to place your item there. Things like that. Little, little nitpicky things that can be sorted out pretty easily but aren't working currently sometimes in 3.4.1. Bounties can be a bit confusing too as multiple named bounties can spawn in exactly the same area with the same name and that can be confusing especially if multiple players are trying to complete a mission on your server. Also sometimes it takes a while for bounties to respawn so you can have a bounty mission and there's no information about it other than Gotta kill this named guy. Don't know where he is. Obviously, if you don't know where he is, there's no way you're going to be able to find him in the verse. That does need to be tweaked and entirely unique generated bounty names would help. So you could go, we're going to spawn this dude. He's got a unique name and it's for this person's mission. Bam. Simple. Done. But missions work and mission givers consistently seem to work for the most part. They're very completable. I haven't had any problems with unresponsive NPCs and mission givers like I previously had in some of the builds of Star Citizen. Missions don't just become entirely uncompletable for the most part. It's, it's pretty good. Earlier today, I was able to sit down and play for about four hours straight, lots of different missions without any form of crashes, without any form of problems with those missions. It was a, it was a pretty solid session. And previous versions of Star Citizen, that would have been pretty much near unheard of. Um, frame rates and everything, stability, that's all pretty damn good. Now, even in those more problem areas of Lawville and Levski, frame rates are getting better. They're still pretty bad in those areas compared to the rest of the game, where I'm seeing 80 plus frames in pretty much every other area. And then occasionally in the worst bits of Levski and Lawville, 30, 35 frames. Um, but as soon as you're out of those sort of like landing zones, it's, it's only when you're really coming down to land that you have those sort of problems. Uh, as soon as you've um, landed or whatever, that frame rates are uh, much, much higher again. So some of the other gameplay loops at the moment, mining, that's pretty hands-on, works really well. You can only do that in a prospector though. They have really ironed out some of the bugs for that. And they've got asteroid mining now, as well as nodes on planets and moon surfaces that you can still mine. Cargo hauling as well. That's a good way of making money in the game at the moment. Uh, obviously mining is as well. Uh, but if you have one of the larger haulers, then yeah, you can make a good amount of money from cargo hauling. Smaller ships will have to go to like Jump Town and buy Widow if they want to make any real money from trade at the moment. Some more areas or commodities like that would be really useful that would allow small and medium sized ships to make a, a reasonable amount of money from, from trade as long as they don't mind being a bit risky. Obviously the, the Widow, for example, makes a lot of money, but people know that that trade route exists and will ambush you, attack you, and lots of stuff happens on that route. But having some more dangerous areas with some more unique goods, I think that would be a good idea as well. That would allow a lot more gameplay in the area. Um, so multi-crew and the multiplayer experience is actually pretty slick at the moment and probably one of the best things about the game. Remote turrets, man turrets, and MFDs, so the multifunction displays, co-pilots, consoles, they all work, and they work reasonably well. So you have reasons to group up and take a ship together now. You can run that ship pretty effectively. You can run missions with a group of people on a single ship. You can't share the missions properly anyway, but you could send someone funds via the service beacons. You can also all quantum jump together in a fleet of ships as long as you're all in the same group. VoIP works as well. You can see where turret gunners are pointing and firing. There's lots of little quality of life things that have all come together now and lots of other little systems that make the social play and the group play really pretty damn fun. And obviously that's a core pillar of Star Citizen, being able to multi-crew ships and do all that, this sort of stuff together. But um, it, it is starting to, to really sort of like show a little taste of it now. Planned events can be amazing fun. So uh, Lost Sinkles to Roberts that I did, uh, which was like the Destruction Derby with a, a whole server full of the Spanish community. Uh, capital ship battles can be organized. So you can have hammerheads with whole fleets of ships fighting each other, free-for-alls on planets and in space, hostage rescue, RP stuff, locking down Jump Town or another zone. There's loads of cool pre-planned events that you can organize and that make Star Citizen as an experience incredibly good fun at the moment. There's a lot of stuff that isn't there yet and 
planning an event allows you to get around the fact that there are missions that cater for the particular gameplay that you want at the moment. There's the Daymar Rally, which is going to be in January 2019. That's going to be great fun. That's 300 kilometers driving around Daymar. And it's basically a big sandbox race. And these sandbox events and these organized events, they really do work for Star Citizen. Something else I'd like to point out at this stage is solo versus group experience gameplay. So Star Citizen's Persistent Universe is totally playable and pretty fun solo, but the group play is where the most fun is at, in my opinion, at the moment. With missions and gameplay getting pretty repetitive without that group experience currently if you're playing for hours and hours and hours. Not that playing solo sometimes isn't mega fun, it's just for long-term play. I want an organization, I want to play with a group of players, I want to play with friends. This allows you to play for many, many more hours and have a lot more fun than you otherwise would if you were just playing single player and just experiencing the game. You're like, well, I've done everything now after like 30 hours. What, what else is there to do? Uh, PvP-wise, there are some missions that get you to fight and um, have a bit of conflict with other players. You can break into player ships as well with, like, the multi-tool or blow off their doors or whatever, because the counter to that is that you can lock your ship's doors now as well. If you're in a group with a player, you can actually access their, their ship uh, as if it's yours, but um, if you're not, then that stuff's locked and you'd have to smash their doors in. Uh, when, one second. Uh, there's still people fighting around jump down, buying Widow and trading it. That's actually one of the, the larger gameplay loops at the moment. People will extort and kill you around there. If you have cargo on your ships, um, boxes can spawn when that ship explodes. They can be looted, so there's reasons for players to shoot you. Um, some missions can be only accessed if you're a criminal, so the pirate and outlaw gameplay does have reasons. But really... There just needs to be a bit more gameplay to that, a bit, a few more reasons, a few more things there that allow that outlaw and PvP gameplay to come together uh, more properly. Really, we need NPCs that are going around in convoys and trade convoys and stuff like that, that pirates and, and outlaw players can attack and that um, the more lawful players, they can escort. So that sort of gameplay would work really well and is really sorely needed. Well, as I said, with some of the uh, group organized stuff, planned PvP uh, and the more interesting emergent PvP is still an amazingly fun experience at the moment. Scanning is actually useful now. Um, you can press tab and ping for signals. This lets you find ships, mineables, probes, and will show you sort of like the general area that those things are in. You fly towards them and then your radar will uh, eventually detect them. However, you can hover over a target now when you're in scan mode and you find out a bit more information about the ship, the owner, um, do they have any cargo on board, what composition is a particular mineable made of, that sort of stuff. And and you can even do this over like nav points now as well. You can hover over a Port of and go, this is Port of it is a space station, and that sort of thing. And that's going to slowly have more and more information expanded out to us but at the moment super useful anyway there's a lot of ships in game now and there's a lot of different things that you can purchase in game ship items weapons customization that's all very important um you still do lose your loadouts on ships at the moment when your ship is destroyed so bear that in mind um you can claim the ship back but not the changes that you made to the ship and any weapons or items you bought they're going to be lost if you bought them with Alpha UEC. So your items on your ships that you can buy with Alpha UEC now do allow you to win battles and basically do more. Uh, it's as simple as that, really. It gives you a reason to earn Alpha UEC because you want to improve your ship and your equipment. And this is the same as your FPS gear. Wearing some reasonably good armor, having uh, the proper weapons, having a couple of medipans and grenades, that's going to do you pretty well. However, I don't really like the heavy armor um, because it makes you so slow when you're running around. Um, you want that um, that lighter armor, in my opinion, and just make sure you're shooting your targets. It's only really PvP that's going to cause you any issue uh, anyway, so bear that in mind. Also, ship purchases are in, uh, meaning that you can buy ships with Alpha UEC. They have raised the sort of like rewards you get Alpha UEC-wise for missions, so these sort of ships that are worth 1.6 million alpha uec they are obtainable but if you've only got a starter ship yourself you're going to be in for a grind it's going to take you 15 plus hours at least to grind up to a bit of an upgrade for a ship that's going to allow you to make a bit more money sending money to friends via service beacons can help here as well as like agreeing to do missions together and then sharing rewards um, that can work uh, doing combat assist service beacons can actually make quite a lot of money I should have really included service beacons in my uh, mission section that I was talking about earlier. Service beacons work, and they just really need a more robust contract system, but 
the occasional service beacon mission popping up from player is actually really good fun and can make you a lot of money. In fact, on active servers, you could probably run uh, players around literally transporting them to places or just doing combat assists all day and have quite a good amount of fun. Going back to ship purchasing though, really we need ship rentals. I'm surprised they didn't put them in in 3.4. Having the ability to rent a load of the ships, even if it's for a reasonable amount of Alpha UEC, uh, would be very useful in allowing players to test uh, certain ships out, get a, a sort of like flavor for different gameplay, and be able to make more Alpha UEC to then buy a ship in game. Also, the range of ships we can purchase at the moment is pretty limited, so I'm, I'm hoping they expand that out soon. It's great that we can buy a lot of stuff now, but uh, it still needs a bit more work, certainly. The Stanton system, our gameplay area in Star Citizen at the moment, has become rather large now. It takes 5 to 12 minutes to get from one side of the playable space area in quantum travel to the other. This is dependent on the size and type of quantum drive you have, obviously. It kind of works having long distance travel, or at least you can sort of see where they're going with it now. Some more detailed mission descriptions or a mission filter showing you just missions that are in a certain area would do wonders because you don't want to be constantly traveling 12 minutes a time from one area to another area to another area just to complete one mission. That would be hella tedious, especially at the moment. Hurston's gameplay area is actually quite fun. But the entry and exit into Hurston's atmosphere takes ages. Even if you're doing missions just planet side, the planet is so vast and your speed is so restricted when you're in low atmosphere that it takes ages to get in and out and get to the sort of like positioning where you can then quantum travel to uh, the other side of the planet. So some tweaks there would be helpful, reducing the bounds of where you can quantum travel from so I can get out of the atmosphere quicker or maybe even just raise those speeds, uh, the safe speeds in atmosphere so you can get out quicker again. Uh, also, some of the mission areas are like thousands of kilometers away from uh, the closest waypoint you can quantum travel to on Hurston. And that means that you're going to have to spend another few minutes getting there, um, but not back because obviously you can just quantum travel back. Well, once you've left the atmosphere. So it does get quite tedious for certain things. Now, this isn't a massive problem if you're with a group of people because you're chatting, you're socializing. But if you're doing solo missions by yourself, then really you'd have to really, really pick and choose what missions you do to make sure you're not going to be traveling long distances constantly. Lawville's new area, the CBD, the Central Business District, looks great and makes Lawville feel a lot larger. There's some beautiful assets there as well, um, some interesting areas, new shop. Uh, a new little trade area, a new mission giver there. And Lawville is an amazing achievement. A huge city with a train network, train network works, and various areas to explore all around there. Flying around it at night really makes you feel its scale and gives you a little taste for the future plans of the game. Massive city planets and very different feeling planets around the verse. Very interesting biomes around Hurston as well. We can actually see a variety of biomes, not just a single biome like we've had on the moons previously. A full planet full of water and things like that. Water, not much you can do there at the moment. If it gets to your head height, it kills you, but you can wade in it if you want. Um, there are some issues that I really want to highlight here. So currently, flight combat and ESP. ESP is literally awful. It's like a competitor made it, the flight model for Star Citizen to sabotage Star Citizen. Just turn it off right away. Just That's the first thing I do at the moment. Turn it off. It's supposed to normalize input um, of you aiming as you get closer to a target. So you're less likely to undershoot or overshoot. It's very useful if you're a stick user or you're using fixed weapons on a mouse or something like that. But at the moment, that's not what it does. At the moment, it makes you under an overshoot and feels like your mouse or whatever control device you're using has balloons attached to it that are pulling your device away from you when you're trying to do it. So yeah, that is, it is pretty bad. Uh, combat AI, both in space and on the ground, are pretty derpy at the moment. They don't really pose any form of risk or difficulty. The actual flight combat requires that new flight model coming in 3.5. It's sort of kind of been left until that gets done. So March, 2019, that new flight model there's a lot riding on that to really start to bring those combat AI and those combat APCs and the um, 
flight combat all together and actually have a good experience there. So yeah, balance, IFCS, combat, AI, um, and ESP for the new flight model, end of March 2019, 3.5, boom. Probably the thing I'm most looking forward to next year, to be honest. Uh, that said, it's still extremely pretty and fun. Multi-crewing ships and turrets is really pretty awesome, and you can have a lot of fun with the flight combat still. It's just you're not going to get any form of challenge from an NPC at the moment. And PvP, if you find a good pilot that's reasonably good at the system at the moment, they probably will wreck you. They wreck me anyway. Uh, if you crash and it's not a server crash, you can actually just rejoin the server you were in now. Um, when you go back in, you can literally just press left bracket. Bam, you'll be straight back in. I haven't actually experienced a server crash in the 3.4.1 build as of the 27th of December, uh, which has been pretty good. So stability is pretty, pretty damn stable for me. Uh, Star Citizen is in the best place I've ever seen it. 3.4.1 has a bit of polish. Hurston looks amazing. And a lot of the game is accessible. The gameplay area is massive. Missions are very fun and playable. It's fun even to just go around Hurston at the moment and look at its different biomes just flying around or driving around, both during the day and night. Those planets and moons now really work. There's a lot of effort gone into lighting and the soundscape and just everything coming together now. And the procedural generation just keeps seems to get better and better and better. Planets and moons rotate at the moment, but they don't orbit yet. At some point, that is planned, though. A lot of the core of Star Citizen is genuinely coming together. Even FOIP that I didn't really previously mention. That's pretty good fun at the moment, but it's not really any reason to use it without a few more things coming together it's great for videos it's great for content creators star citizen's probably one of the best games ever for content creators if someone wanted to sit down and actually be good at editing and good at making machinima or scripting or whatever you could probably do some amazing things i'm but until they have that new flight model in ship combat is desperately lacking in my opinion hopefully something pretty solid will come along for alpha 3.5 a few more fixes and tweaks to missions in a 3.4.2 in the very short term would go a long way. Some thought may be gone into travel times around Hurston, at least in my opinion. Um, Star Citizen is not in a place to recommend to people that want to sit down and play a game yet, unless they're joining a big organization, unless they've got a big group of friends that already play. There is still no tutorial and Star Citizen is pretty intimidating to new players. Uh, if you don't have a friend that already plays or you um, don't do some sort of like out of game research before playing, it requires more work really for people that want that more full gameplay experience. We need a few things, including full persistence, um, as currently every three months your Alpha UBC and Alpha UBC purchases typically get reset. Your mission progress and your rep isn't really saved between sessions. But to players that don't mind testing a game that's still very much an alpha, then now is actually pretty fun. It's part of a gameplay loop giving feedback at the moment and, and bug reporting really anyway. But 3.5 with the new flight model, that might be a very good time for a lot more people to get involved that previously have avoided the project. During December, we are giving away a Star Citizen game package, Saber Raven and CitizenCon 2948 goodies pack. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning those is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos made during December. More details are linked below. And if you are considering getting a new gaming PC or upgrading first, please consider the Shadow Cloud Gaming Service. It leverages the power of your internet connection to turn a device, be it phone, laptop, tablet, or PC, into a powerful Windows 10 gaming rig. I've seen people just use their phones and a gamepad now to play Star Citizen. It works great for me in Star Citizen Alpha 3.3.7, and the Shadow guys keep on updating both their hardware and software. Your mileage may vary with Shadow, though, based on your internet connection, so please bear that in mind. It is subscription-based, and using the code BOARDGAMER will net you a discount. Discount. If you don't have Star Citizen yet, then please check out the links below as well to get 5,000 UEC, the in-game currency, as a bonus. Any comments and feedback is appreciated. Please take care, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.